Okay, I had somebody ask me a question on how I set up the dual batteries in this uh, Silverado truck. So I'll kind of walk you over to it and kind of show you how I did it. Um, it's actually got an isolator, so it, uh, I can charge both batteries at the same time. So hopefully this makes sense to you. Okay, basically what I've done, here's my factory battery and here is my auxiliary battery. I have a dual fuse connector, 60 amp on both sides. So I run a feed in there and then I've got it bridged off, but that way if I ever want to do another uh, Wire lead off of here. I can come right off of here. So I've got two of those Then I've also have a 250 amp isolator what this does is This charges both batteries at the exact same time um, when you're when you're setting this up uh, when we first set this up, we actually built this for snowplow. Um, we turned it into kind of a show truck. So um, we wanted to make sure we had enough power to run the plow. Now uh, the reason that we have dual batteries in here, not because it's a diesel, it's not a diesel. Uh, we put dual batteries in here so that we'd have extra power if we ever wanted to put a big stereo system in here, anything like that. So I'll show you what I did um, on the factory uh, evaporative canister for the fuel tank you need to make sure um, if you do the dual batteries that you do put this canister back in or you will get a check engine light so this is what I got the factory canister which is right here it actually sat like somewhere right around this vicinity um, from factory before I put this auxiliary battery in what I did is uh, maybe I'll take a couple snapshots too so you can see I just relocated this canister actually underneath the uh, the battery bracket this battery bracket I picked up from um, I just picked it up from the junkyard reason I did is I didn't want to wait for LMC to get me a battery bracket and so I basically went down the best way that I found to mount this was to take the inner fender liner out um, I have a video um, on YouTube that shows how the fender liner comes out there's three bolts right here um, there's a bolt here See if you can see my finger. There's a bolt here, a bolt here, a bolt here, and that'll take the whole bracket completely out. Now, if you want to take the fender liner out, you take these bolts out up here. I also have another video that shows how that all comes out. So if you want to do that, it's easier for uh, for mounting this. It doesn't take too long to get that out. So, but basically what I did is I relocated it and moved it underneath that bracket. I put two bolts in it. Those two bolts, there's one here and one there, they're actually bolted right to the leg of this battery bracket. Um, so hopefully that helps. What else I did with the, um, there's, a, there's a tube here, a vacuum tube that uh, keeps the, the tank pressurized. What we want to do with this is just get a tubing cutter and cut it so that the, um, you don't want to use pliers or tin snips or anything like that. You want to actually use a tubing cutter because if you don't, it will uh, it will smash the tube. You don't want to smash the tube. You want to still be able to get a vent tube through there. And I think that's the only modification I had to make on this tube. The other one, I believe, just mounted straight up to it, um, which is right here. And I just used the factory one for that. So hopefully you can see what I did. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, let's feel free to send me a back, message back. Then on this dual, dual battery setup, um, probably want to make another video on that if you're interested in learning how to do that. Um, I'll just kind of briefly break it down. I've got a ground that comes, it's a four gauge ground that goes right to the fender. And then I've also got this wire here that is a ground for the relay isolator. Um, and then I've got an ignition power that comes right from the key. I just I think I grabbed that from the ignition harness underneath the steering column. And if you don't know where that's at, I've got a video on shaved door handles that shows right where that wire harness is. And then I've just run a, a standard four gauge feed from here to here. And then on the outside of this isolator into the uh, factory battery. So what happens is this, this alternator, when it's running, It'll send power from the battery through the fuse block into the isolator. When you turn the key on, it'll flip the switch so that it sends power out of the isolator into this battery, charging this battery at the exact same time. Now, when I turn the key off and whatever I hook to this battery will run off of this battery 
and will not affect my factory battery. That'll stay charged all times. All my auxiliary sources come straight from this battery. So if you ever want to build a big stereo system or something like that, maybe I'll include a wiring diagram. If I get much response for it, I'll, I'll include a wiring diagram on how to connect an isolator up um, and also where you can locate it. I think I got this one at stinger.com. Um, it's a few years old. It's a Stinger uh, SR200. I think this is probably about 10 years old and it still works great. When you turn the key on, it has a big relay that switches inside there, allowing the energy to come from here into the other battery. So hopefully that explains it to you, um, that maybe that canister, you didn't see it very well. Um, maybe I'll take a couple snapshots for it so you have that as well. So hopefully that helps you.